Hi guys, Path of Gaming right here right now, bringing you a TFT lullaby. This series is for those of you who have problems falling asleep and love TFT. Today, I will read what every one cause does, because after tens and tens of hours of coaching, I have realized that most people don't even take the time to read about the champions they play over and over again, and then they are surprised that they don't know what they do. So let's dive right into it. Brand. After a brief delay, Brand erupts the ground under the enemy with the highest current health to erupt in flames, dealing magic damage to enemies within. If an enemy is caught in the epicenter, they are stunned for a few seconds. So essentially, this can hit one hex as well as all the hexes around. And the unit in the middle is stunned and the other units just are just dealt damage. So what is good on Brand? Well, since Brand is a replacement for Nami, Ludin's Echo is probably one of the best items on him. So if you manage to get a tear or a rod, and then you get a whatever counterpart you're missing early on, you might want to consider slamming a Ludens and playing Brand. Obviously, for Brand to work, you're going to want to have three mages. Three mages is enough because it's not the, the damage of the spell that matters, it's the Ludens damage. Because Ludens is kind of broken, like if it procs, if it does its full damage twice, that's actually more than this damage. And also it hits all the units around. So it, it'll kill one unit and then it'll hurt all other units. And the fact is the second the second epicenter can stun a different unit. <clears throat> so actually what can happen is he can stun one unit and the Ludens will proc and stun another unit next to it and proc and it'll like the Ludens will like just delete delete a bunch of units. So you want three mages? And possibly Dragon Soul is good as well. Uh, not because of the, the magic damage, but because of the attack speed. And if he attacks faster, then he's going to be able to, ha to generate more mana and cast more often. So that's Brand. Diana. Now, Diana has three stars next to her. Three stars means she is worth three starring. Diana shields herself against damage over four seconds and summons some orbs to orbit around her. These orbs explode for magic damage when they hit an enemy, refreshing her shield when the final one explodes. So Diana is really powerful. She's no longer a moonlight, but she's a spirit. Um, she has decent shielding from the orbs. She does decent damage. And uh, the fact that she's a spirit means that it's easy to put in some spirits for faster attack speed. Now, attack speed is, is brilliant. Like, uh, if you run two or four spirits early, that's going to help you tremendously because the damage output of your whole team is going to skyrocket because spirits give a 40% bonus attack speed. So that's really, really strong. And assassin means, if you guys don't know that, that her spell's going to crit. So this orb can do 90 damage, but like 100 damage, it's easier to count the 100 damage. If you have 5 orbs, that's 500 damage. And if you have an IE, and if you have an assassin, they can crit. So that's going to be doing something around, uh, I'm going to just say like 800 damage, ballpark figure, from our orbs, which is pretty bonkers. And on top of that, if you if you have some, some items like Titans, Runans, which are considered the best IE Titans, Runans on her, she can actually do a lot of damage. So three star Diana is really good. Uh, the like assassin is even better because you can play six assassins, which got buffed. So that's even more insane. And spirits are okay. Spirits are also okay. Um, if you have four spirits, I mean, if you have chosen spirit, you can just run uh, Timo for the blind, and obviously you always want to run Yumi. And if you have assassin Diana, then you just then you can just run Yumi. Or you can run 4-Spirit as well. 
it's really up to you. But but the main point is the main point is three star Diana is a viable comp. Elise. Elise transforms into a spider, gaining a percentage of maximum health and causing her attacks to restore health. So Elise is a call to send a keeper. Uh, typically you play here with another keeper and you want to run three cultists. The reasons why you want the reason why you want another keeper with cultists is because the keeper shields actually count towards Galio slamming down, coming down sooner. So remember to play keeper when you're playing cultist. As for her own abilities, um, if you slam a Zeke's on her, for example, she'll attack faster and regain more health. So that's that's something to consider. Just like making sure she attacks fast enough. Like, like if she's attacking, if it if she if it's she's in a one v one, and she has a Zeke's and the opponent doesn't have a Zeke's, she'll actually like out heal them. Probably even t she can probably even two v one or three v one if he, if she kills the units fast enough, right? Because she's gonna heal a lot. So that's just something to consider. Uh, there are some troll builds like death cap on her, but typically you just you just want her early. She doesn't have the three star next to her. Uh, you could potentially three star her if you have a chosen cultist and you want to go cultist, but typically she's not someone you want to three star. Fiora. Fiora enters a defensive stance for a few seconds, becoming immune to damage and enemy spells. Afterwards, she strikes, dealing magic damage to nearby to a nearby enemy and stunning them for a few seconds. So Fiora's kind of strong. Like chosen Fiora is no joke. Obviously you don't want to three star her, you don't want to play her in your late game, but the fact that she's an enlightened duelist means the duelist trait gets her to attack faster, right? And attacking fast is good for generating mana. The fact that she's enlightened, she can generate more mana per auto. So if we have two duelists, to enlightened this is this is 75 right but if it's too enlightened which is 50 percent higher she's not going to get 10 per attack 10 mana per attack so it's 10 times 8 is 80 she will get 15 per attack and 5 times 15 is 75 so she only needs five attacks to cast again and it's it's completely insane like if you have four enlightened obviously it's it's 80 like four times 20 is 80 so it's just four attacks. If you have four duelists, the attacks are even faster. So Fiora can win most 1v1s, um, even some 1v2s. Because she just like keeps the, the units done locked. Because, I mean, yes, attack speed is 0.75, and this is 2.5 stun. But her attack speed skyrockets. So she can attack four times before the before the unit she's fighting can even react. It's a little it's a little frustrating like when your units are stun locked. Like I had a TF, just stun locked, never throw his cards. Whatever unit she's she's stunning, she'll just stun it, move on to the next one. So really good unit to run run early. Um, Garen. Garen spins his sword for four seconds, dealing magic damage to nearby enemies and reducing incoming magic damage by 80% over the duration. So Garen is a great tank. He's a vanguard and he's a warlord. And those are both very tanky attributes or traits, right? Classes and origins. So if you have another Vanguard, he'll get even more armor and more magic resistance, and he gets more magic resistance while spinning. And if you have a Warlord, he gets uh, more HP and more magic damage, which is really good. So Garen is, a, is like a great tank, and at the same time, he's a damage dealer. So he's he's really, really good. If you two-star him early, or if you have a, if you have a chosen Garen, He's really powerful. If you have a Vanguard, you just put in more Vanguards. If you have a Warlord, you put in more Warlords. Uh, with Warlords, you can play six. With Vanguards, you can play like four Vanguard, three Warlord. It's really powerful. And some items for Garen are just are just tank items. I, I would suggest like a Sunfire Cape, because he doesn't die. Um, you can also try like a like a Hodge, for example. If you if he want, if he uh, hits healing, he'll just heal himself to full every time he spins. Uh, if he if he hits uh, damage, he'll just uh, spin and kill everything. So that's Garen. Maokai. Maokai smashes the ground, sending forward a shockwave that deals magic damage to enemies hit and slowing their attack speed by 50% for 3 seconds. Now, this ability can hit multiple units. So you have... To, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention uh, Garen as well. 
his ability can hit multiple units. So you want to make sure that you position him in such a way that when he spins, he's surrounded by units. With Maokai, the case is similar, but you don't want Maokai completely surrounded. You want like units to be lined up. So when Maokai ulties, he smacks the ground and he and he is able to hit more units. And the damage is done to everyone, right? So the damage is done to everyone and their attack speed is slowed. Uh, so you want to make sure that he attacks or like his ulti hits multiple units. He's an Elderwood Brawler. Uh, if you have two Brawlers, he gets more HP. If you have Elderwood, he becomes extremely tanky. So he's really, really good. If you get either of these traits chosen, that's perfect. You can just, just chill with them, chill with him. Uh, I think Maokai is one of, one of the units that you can just like chill on stage two and stage three if you have him chosen. And uh, yeah, you probably saw him on stage four once you get to eight. So he's like, a, you can easily get to eight with him. Nasus. Now Nasus, uh, the, the, the angry doggo, has these three stars next to him, which means he can become a carry if you have the right items. So he will tank in the front with like a, with like a Titans, uh, with like a Bramble, with like a D-Claw. You just want like very tanky items on him so that he's hard to kill because his ability is, uh, or what, what his ability does is, Nasus withers the enemy with the highest percent health, dealing magic damage over five seconds and slowing their attack speed and movement speed by 50% for the duration. So, he essentially picks off carries. And the crazy thing is, this is 600 damage, right? That's not enough to kill most carries in the back, like especially with some magic resistance. But, if you have a Titans on him, that's actually going to be 900 damage. Alternatively, I mean, if you 3-star him, he can, he can one-shot he can one-shot stuff. But if, if you have a, a Titans on him, he can one-shot things at 2-star. If you 3-star him, he can also one-shot things. And while he's killing everything, he's also healing up. Um, Divine is kind of a, not a great trait for him. Uh, the reason why Divine is, is a bad trait for him is because when you're playing with Nasus, it's like a battle of attrition. You kind of want the units to die. I mean, no, you want the units to die fast, obviously, but the units die slowly, right? It's over five seconds, and he needs to he needs to cast on like the the, the Nidalee up here, and then the Teemo over here, and it, it takes a while. So having Divine for three or six seconds doesn't really do that much. So you definitely want to. I mean, if you can, it's much better if you get a Siphoner. You definitely want to run four Siphoners. If you have four Siphoners and if you have a tanky Nasus. The restart, he's just, just going to keep healing and healing and healing unless like they have extreme burst. But if he has, if, if he has a D-Claw, Bramble, and uh, Titans, he's very hard to kill. Also, I think one of the best items on him would be a Vanguard Spatula because then he's just completely unkillable. Nidalee. Nidalee throws her javelin at the farthest enemy dealing magic damage plus 20% more for each hex traveled. Now, farthest means you want to position her in a way that she's across from uh, their, their carry, right? So the farther the unit is, the more damage Nidalee will do. So you want to make sure that you position Nidalee in such a way that she's able to snipe units. Uh, she's a warlord. She's a sharpshooter. Sharpshooters got buffed. So you definitely want to have two sharpshooters because two sharpshooters is actually what four, four sharpshooters were in the last set or in set four. And Warlord is just going to make her do more damage with her, with her spear and have a little, little bit more HP. Obviously, Chosen Italy is completely busted. Super, super strong. Uh, I've tried 3-starring her. I don't think she's worth 3-starring. I think she's also like a easy fast 8 if you have her and a bunch of Warlords and another Sharpshooter like Teemo. So she's, she's really powerful. Tom Kench. Uh, Tom Kench takes reduced damage from all sources. That's about it, right? He's the ultimate tank. Uh, 15, 25, like 25 is actually pretty good because if you think about it, I mean, his, his attack damage is very, very high, but most units, like if, if we look at the most units, they do like 45, 45, okay, 55, 90, like two stars are doing 90, right? But he, he has also some armor, right? So even if they're doing like 90 damage, there's armor reductions. So obviously you want to build him in like a tanky, tanky way. So he, he's not going to take that much damage, right? He's going to take like 90 plus the reductions which is which makes it like 60 minus that so he, he takes like 40 ish damage so like everything kind of tickles him unless they have like a 
high magic burst or like like I, I, it's hard to think of something like yeah the Maokai can kind of do damage Nidalee can kind of do damage with her spear but otherwise everything just tickles him so the way you want to build Tom Kench obviously is also just tanky in the in, in the early game I think the best item on him is Sunfire Cape because he just lives super super long so he'll just essentially help delete other front lines because he's just so tanky and with the Sunfire Cape they'll just burn and obviously a great counter to him is also Sunfire Cape because it just takes away 25% of his health, right? That, that just takes away his, his health and it, it bypasses all of the reductions. Um, you want to play some brawlers with him. Uh, he is uh, the like uh, easy access to fortune. I don't know how I feel about fortune right now. I, I think it's still good if you, if you can play it well, but often it's a trap. So be aware of that. Like running fortune, three fortune on stage two is awesome. Stage three is, it's kind of okay. And stage four onwards, it's super risky. And I would say steer clear. Tristana. Um, Tristana, like I've seen some people three star her. I'm not entirely sold on her being a three star yet. Uh, so you can experiment with that, but uh, I don't give her my stamp of approval just yet. Uh, what, she do, what she does is uh, Tristana excited to dragon increasing her attack speed and dealing bonus magic damage on hit for three seconds so more attack speed bonus magic damage what does that mean things like uh death blade will probably do a lot more damage because she's going to be attacking faster things like shiv if she's attacking faster she's proccing shiv more um other things like maybe like ie so she can she can do more damage. like if she's doing if she's attacking faster you want to think about things that give her more damage and that really augment her ability, right? So yeah, I'm going to say like Deathblade is, is awesome. Rageblade could work because she's going to stack her Rageblade very fast. So like she'll, after she finish, finishes her cast for three seconds, she'll like attack three, three times quickly and then she'll get more attack speed, bonus attack speed. And for the whole duration, right, for the whole duration, she's not getting, she's not getting mana obviously, but for the duration of her bonus attack speed, she can still stack Rageblade. So she'll like stack Rageblade like crazy. And then if she has Static Shift, she'll just melt everyone. Static Shift got buffed. Um, there aren't that many shields right now because Static Shift is great against shields. So like, yes, it can deal with, it can deal with people who, unlock, who have Locket or who run Keepers. That's about it. Sharpshooter, as I mentioned before, Sharpshooter is great. So you definitely want to have another Sharpshooter with her. Uh, ideally Teemo, Nidalee, and of course the new Sivir. That'll give her even more attack speed. And like she'll have completely insane attack speed so if you just give her a little bit of damage she'll just delete teams and you if you three star her uh, and have dragon soul like you, it's really hard to get dragon soul on her because you can't frontline her so it's, it's kind of tricky so like I, I would not say like i would say don't three star her like don't reroll reroll for her but if you get like six seven tristanas you might as well three star her and let you carry carry you early game if you have decent enough items for her twisted fate um, Twisted Fate is also sometimes considered a 3-star carry. Again, I would advise against it because uh, his cards are unreliable, right? Twisted Fate throws three cards in a cone that deal magic damage to each enemy they pass through. So what you got to think about is how do you position Twisted Fate in such a way that his cards have a chance to hit the most people, right? I mean, obviously he can, he can, he can uh, troll you and just throw his, his cards like at some unit in the corner, right? Or at some unit over over here. Like if, if, if this is a board, like if he's here, he can throw up or there or there. So you got to make sure that like, imagine he throws the middle card into the corner, right? Like diagonally, like uh, straight up, horizontally up, yeah? Well, if there's, if he's positioned in that in such a way that there's units over here, even if he, if he kind of whips his cards, like if, if, if it's diagonal rather than just horizontal up, like he's probably going to hit more units. So you kind of want to position him similarly to Nidalee and like a di diagonally away from, from whatever he's trying to hit so that his cards hit through, uh, like go through more units. So he can be very powerful if you position him well. Like his damage is, is not that bad. Like if you, if you have some sort of damage augmentation like a Death Cap, a Hodge, um, a Jeweled Gauntlet, something like that. Like if he, th and especially if he, if he has Mage, like yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit less. I think it's like 300 close enough so it's like 300 twice 600 damage uh, if he has a jeweled gauntlet he can he can delete teams 
It just the, the cards are unreliable. And he's kind of the early, early carry, like stage two carry for cultists. And he's an okay mage, but um, like the way you use Twisted Fate, honestly, is you put your Aurelian Soul items on him, and as soon as you find Aurelian Soul, you, you dump TF. That, that's kind of how, how you play TF. I'm sorry, bro, but that's all you're good for, man. Uh, Wukong. Now, Mr. Bonker himself. He is bonkers. He is bananas. Uh, he's divine. He's, he's Vanguard. So he's very tanky. Um, again, the way it works, same as with Nasus. Uh, Wukong's, like, since he's a vanguard, since he's tanky, his fights last very long. So, like, the two options for Wukong are, you either need to run, I'd say, like, six divine. So it's at least nine seconds. So that, that way, if you're running divines with Wukong, it can actually last long enough to make, to have some impact, right? Because if you, like, yes, two divine are fine. If you have two divine, yeah, it's, it's three seconds. Um, it's kind of like a little bit of a QSS. But, like, for Divine, 6 seconds, it's not, not that great because Wukong also like takes a while to ramp up. The fights are very long if, very long if you're running Vanguards. Uh, Vanguards are, are, are a lot better, I think, if you have like 4 6 Vanguards with Wukong as your carry. And the way, the way his ultimate works is Wukong slams his target with his staff, dealing per a percentage of his attack damage, his physical damage, and stunning them for a few seconds. So the, the scaling, like the stun is nice. The scaling is, is okay, like it's not that great scaling, but you gotta look at the, the damage, right? So he does a nice chunk of damage. He doesn't have that much, like he doesn't have mana problems. So like, yeah, that's almost 200. Like 200 times, let's say 250 to, to give you a nice number. It's 500 damage. So he's gonna bonk for 500 damage, stun, ramp up, bonk again. He can delete teams at three star. He's, he's really strong. Uh, I have personal experiences with him. I would recommend you uh, recommend you guys to try him out. I would think like his best items would be some like he definitely wants RFC, right? So he can do more damage. I'd say Rage Blade is really good on him because fights are long, so he'll have time to stack it up. And Death Blade would probably be the best as well. So he's he's essentially like similar to Olaf in that regard, right? Apart from the GA, similar items as Olaf. So you can run like if you don't get uh, Wukong three star, or if you get Wukong three star and he starts falling off, and you and you find a two star Olaf. You can just swap the items over from Wukong to Olaf. Um, yeah, so so try it out. Try out this 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 crazy monkey. And last but not least, Yasuo, the exile himself. Yasuo three star is really really powerful. Uh, he's a duelist, which means he attacks extremely fast. Um, and his ultimate uh, also is a little tricky. Like you want to position him in, in such a way to actually maximize ultimate, because what his ultimate does is. Yasuo strikes forward two hexes, attacking for a percentage of his attack damage. If he can't hit two targets from where he's standing, he'll first dash to a place where he can. So if you position him in, like, if you don't position him in, like, the, the like, front corners, right? If you position him somewhere towards the middle, it's likely that he'll be able to ultimate two units. And again, he does 165 damage. So this is, like, again, like, double, uh, 162, sorry, doubled. So he does like, let's say 350-ish damage with his ultimate. Obviously for Yasuo, you want to build him, because he already has built-in attack speed, you want to build like more and more damage. So like an IE, I think IE Titans and QSS is the best. So he can just like ramp up for the first 10 seconds and just delete teams. And the great thing about Yasuo, why Yasuo is like probably one of the best uh, one cost carries is Exile. Right, you, you slap in a Yone once you hit him on seven or eight or nine, like whenever you hit Yone or you pick up Yone from Carousel, Yasuo's gonna start, Yasuo's gonna start healing. Which, uh, as I mentioned, Diana, really good, but you can't really spike her that hard because like, yes, you can go six assassins, but she doesn't have in, like built-in healing from Exile. Uh, Nasus has healing, so like when you get, when you get four uh, Siphoners, it's really powerful. So he's, he's kind of on the same parallel as Yasuo, Wukong also kind of fine, uh, but like if if you look at if you look at these carries like as I mentioned, Diana, Nasus, Wukong, they all lack kind of the late game potential. While Yasuo just has like that late game spike once you get Exile, once you're running uh, Adept, once you're kind of running more stuff to support him, he can really pop off at three star, and he can easily get you to nine. 
And yeah, once you have that Yone, once you have that Lee Sin with like, you can either have, either have four duelists and legendaries or even six duelists. Uh, Yasuo is your man. Yasuo is your man. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. And yeah, you, you can uh, wake up now and congratulations. You're most likely a master player.